I'm Chef Plum, and I've made my entire career off serving fantastic local food. Nothing better than showing your family local pride than using local food from farmers. Look at this. Business is booming, that's Whoa, for sure. Business is booming. Supporting local farmers and artisans is one of the most important things we can do in any state. If we don't support these guys, we're going to lose them. And not to mention, they make great products. Join me as I show you some of my favorite places right here in the Nutmeg State. Got a place that you love? Want to show off some hometown pride? Find us on social media and let us know. Edible Nutmeg on the road. What's up, everybody? I'm Chef Plum, and I've got my buddy, the founder of the New York Cocktail Expo himself, Matt Corey. And we're hanging out today in beautiful Litchfield, Connecticut at Litchfield Distillery. That's exciting. Let's drink. Let's do it. Come with us as we take edible nutmeg on the road to Litchfield Distillery. Yeah. Nestled in the hills of Northwest Connecticut, the Litchfield Distillery is Connecticut's newest micro distillery. The Batcher series includes five handcrafted premium spirits, bourbon whiskey, double barreled bourbon whiskey, bourbon whiskey port cast finish, vodka, and of course one of my personal favorites, gin. Their mission is to produce exceptionally distilled spirits handcrafted from the highest quality regionally harvested grains. All right, David, this is an amazing place. I'm looking around and honestly, I see these things, I think, I'm, didn't Doc Brown have one of these, Matt? He absolutely did, this is freaking me out. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Awesome. So what is this, what are we doing here? Well, this is our still, this was made in Germany. This is the pot still side, they call it a hybrid still. Originally, they used copper because it was easy to bend and form into shape. But as science was applied to the distilling industry, they realized that the copper serves a purpose and takes some of the impurities out during wow. the process. The vodka just came out. May 1st, the vodka came out. How's the response been for it? Terrific. Yeah. Overwhelming. We're running out. We're going to make some more soon. Wow. We're that's amazing. And, and of course, the, uh, the port cast bourbon just came out port as well. Port cast bourbon came out, which came out on limited availability, only 90 cases. I think we're down to about 12. Wow. Almost all the products you have, it's all local corn and local stuff in the actual product itself. The vodka's 100%, yeah. the gin is... Uh, the gin's about, it's 90% uh, Connecticut grown, and the bourbon is 95% Connecticut. Wow. And the other great thing to know is that when this still is finished with the grains, we pack these grains up and we have a local farmer that comes and picks them up and feeds all his dairy cows. Does he really? That's yeah. fantastic. So it's from one farm to here and then back to another farm. Three and a half years ago, we bought some six-year-old bourbon. Now that bourbon is nine years old. So at nine years old, we take it out of the barrel, proof it just above bottle proof. Bottle proof is 88, so we proof it to 90. And then we re-barrel it because that water that you're proofing the alcohol down with to lose the flavor a little bit. So we right. want to get that flavor back. We put it back in the same barrel it came out of and let it sit for another six months so that water can absorb some more flavors from the barrel. Charred barrels come in different varieties, you see. Um, you can see our board here. We've got staves labeled one through four, one being the least charred, four being the most. And this is the designation Cooperage's produce barrels at. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can kind of think of it as rare to well done. Um, the more you cook the stave, the more extractive you get out of it. So bourbon producers usually like a heavier char, three or four. So three or four for bourbon, they like something like that because it adds more flavor Yeah, to yeah, you'll get like ones and twos with, you know, tequila production, rum okay. sometimes, um, lighter age stuff. Because a lot of your vanilla notes, caramel notes, things like that come from all, char, right? All of that comes from, well, the, the toasted layer underneath the char. Oh, okay, okay. Is where you've actually broken down extractives from the wood lignans and cellulose and hemicellulose that can be extracted into the liquid. I love when you come to places like this and hang out and you're like, oh, we're drinking bourbon. He's throwing words like cellulose out and just, it's such, <laughs> yeah. it, it is, it's, it's such a chemistry involved in doing it this. It is, yeah, and, very much so. And when you look at something like this and you see just, even just how the different parts of char, the different layers of char, and how, are the different, how much the char is there, yeah. it's a whole science in itself too. Yeah, it's, it's uh, just like cooking. 
Yeah, yeah that's, that's amazing. At all. That, that is fantastic. So when you guys do your bourbon, you like to use a three or four. Yeah, uh, pretty much all the barrels we have in the warehouse are three or four. Trucks. Now, the barrels in the warehouse, what are the differences in some of them? I've seen some of these are, you know, still smooth and nice and some of them are. I mean, they, 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 they come in different exterior finishes. Um, you know, the smoother ones we got from a wine producing uh, cooperage. Well, the wine guys. And, yeah, the, nice they get they get very nice, fancy. I mean, you can see wine barrel, bourbon barrel. The bourbon barrels tend to be a little, <laughs> little rougher around the edges, but they still hold liquid. I think we describe people in life like this too: wine barrel, and bourbon barrel. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, what's been your favorite product so far you've put out? Probably the poured finished whiskey. The new one that just the came newest out. one. Yeah. Oh man, that sounds. I can't wait to taste that. We haven't tried that one yet. No, we haven't. Yeah, well, that sounds we should awesome. make a point to do that. Though. Yeah, we should absolutely do that. I'm in. Let's do it. All right. Whoa, more bourbon. Oh, I'm in. Mm, yeah, more Spring. bourbon. Go. So this is a nine-year-old high-ride bourbon. Like, what's the proof on this right now, currently? I have not measured it yet, but I would suspect it's around 115 proof. Okay. It has such a sweetness to it, like, just like this, I would just drizzle it over pancakes and whipped cream. <laughs> Chef, what would you do with this with some maple syrup? Would, I would take a bath. <laughs> <laughs> So you have here, this is your young bourbon and yeah. the gin, right? So we'll pull these around. Um, young bourbon, explain that one. Young bourbon. It's just uh, our mash bill distilled here. Um, it's, you know, Connecticut grown pretty much, except for the barley. And yeah, it's, it, it's going to develop as time goes by, but we are very happy with it as it is. Yeah, yeah. You're the, the, the resident expert at this table right now. Usually I go to Matt, but, but I think he's got one step on you right For now. For gin? But, yeah. Oh, yeah. In general. So show us how <laughs> <laughs> Show us how uh, tasting a bourbon and tasting a gin would work if we're doing like a blind tasting or if we just how these guys at these competitions might, might go about tasting this and what they'd look for. Well, they would, they would not know what it was poured from. They would just get the glasses presented to them. Yeah. And then some of the things be, they look for when they taste it, some of the uh, you know the notes, the characteristics, that sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean it's it's a pretty straightforward process. You examine it, um, you know, you look at the light, look at the color, you get in a, a whiff, you know, let the aroma into your olfactory, and then sip it. When you say young bourbon, that smells great to me. Oh yeah, I'm very happy with it for the age it is. I mean, it does. It smells fantastic. Yeah. Let's talk gin. The gin, gin, also a great summer drink. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, let's pour it out. You guys can appreciate not, it for what it is. You're not gonna have me say no. Wow. The juniper is right there. Right. But it's it's rounded out with coriander and the citrus in it, and the elderberries. It's there, but it's probably the most difficult thing to pick up. You guys recently won some awards. We did, yeah. We uh, entered our gin and our young bourbon into the San Francisco International Spirits Competition. Wow. Which is the big time. Um, it's all blind tasting. That's crazy. It's um, gotta be a little intimidating, right? Well, you never know what you're gonna get. You might just get a, you know, thanks for participating, or yeah, you yeah. might walk away. We got two silver medals. So. Which is fantastic, right? For a, for a very young distillery, yeah. It's pretty That's awesome. amazing. And it's gotta feel pretty good for you, and just the whole thing. I mean, this is something you've, 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 you've blood, sweat, and tears, basically, to make, this, right. make it happen. Oh, yeah, it's certainly validating. You know what I can picture with this really well right now, gentlemen? Yeah. Food. <laughs> I think I can feel food That's, with this right now. And yeah. to the point where I actually want to show you. You guys want to go cook with me? Absolutely. Yes. Awesome. When we come back, I'm grilling chicken wings with Jen, baby. Everybody cooks a bourbon, right? Yeah. So I'm like, what can we make with gin for the summer? A fun opportunity to show a different way to cook using spirits. So I came up with an awesome gin chicken wing. This is gonna <laughs> blow your mind. This dish is crazy. So it's really, really simple. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna par cook the wings a little bit. Par cooking means we're gonna bring them, not cook them all the way through, but get them close there because then we're gonna finish them on the grill. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a little bit of water to a pan just like this, right? And then you're gonna add a little gin to it. Right in there, right? You're gonna add about a half a cup or so. Matt's gonna put them right in there. Also really important, always, always folks, season your water whenever you're cooking the water. Water doesn't come seasoned, Matt, you gotta season it. So what happens is, these wings come out, they look kinda like this, right? So let them cool off a little bit, but while they're cooling off, we gotta make the sauce. So here we go, we got our bowl, we have got brown sugar, right in the bowl, right? Fresh garlic, right into the bowl, just like that. Then, a little bit of lemon juice, Juice of one lemon here. Here you go. Let's let's uh, ah. let's let David do it so we can see it. Here, pop that's that right great. in there. Ooh. A little bit of lemon zest. Oh, the zest. Pop it right that's in there. Wonderful. Right. Yeah. Lemon zest, and we're gonna give it a nice little pinch of salt. A little bit of gin. Here we go. We're gonna add about 
you know, listen, I think the recipe says three tablespoons or so. I'm gonna eyeball it. What are we doing here? Take the pour off. Here we go. Add a little gin right there. There we go. Mix that up. Wings go right in there. Really Right? Now remember, these wings are cooked through for the most part. Give them a little toss around in here. Beautiful. Look at that. Now, pop open our grill. Again, we've got a little indirect heat going on here. One of the cool things you gave us when we walked in the door. Shredded uh, bourbon barrels. Shredded oh, bourbon man. barrels. How that about is, that in there? That here we go. Right on the grill. And these are going to cook very quickly. We're just trying to get that sugar to caramelize on the wing a little bit, to add a little extra flavor to it. And that gin is going to add so much flavor to it. We'll close those guys up. In the meantime, let's have a sip of drink. Cheers. Cheers, gentlemen. Cheers. Wings at Litchfield Distillery. Here we go. Ah, oh, it's refreshing. Delicious. Oh, it's great. Great summertime drink. Unbelievable. Oh, these wings look great. They're ready to come off. Yeah. All right, here we go. That smoke from those wood chips from the barrels, that's unbelievable, right? Those look great. Look at that color. Look at this. Put them right back in here. Look at that. I mean, you're talking about a wing for the summertime. There we go. All right, gentlemen, let's play to some chicken wings. You ready? Let's go. Here's what we're going to do. So we're going to take one of these wings out, put it right on the board. I like to use boards. I think boards are very rustic and they look cool. Put a little shallot on there. And then my man Matt is going to sprinkle on Ooh, some cilantro. Don't mind if I do. Let's just get that color on there. And just to finish it off, I'll take a little bit of the sauce just like this. Wow. There we go. That looks tasty. Look at that. That is a gin chicken wing. Cheers, gentlemen. Here it is. Cheers. Chicken chicken. There it is. Edible nutmeg on the road. Litchfield Distillery. Check them out. We'll see you guys next time. There it is. I'm eating chicken wings. What's up guys? I'm Chef Plum and let me tell you something. Right now, it's one of my favorite times of year. The air is getting brisk, we're getting great wintertime beers, and it's fall festival season. And right now, I'm hanging out at the New Canaan Nature Center for the fifth annual Harvest Festival. There's great beer, there's great food, there's an amazing band playing. I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it home. All I do know is I'm gonna have a great time hanging out right now on Edible Nutmeg on the road. Welcome, it's welcome. This is our fifth annual Harvest Festival. Wow. Fifth annual Harvest it's very Fest. Very exciting. Has it gotten bigger each year? Yes, absolutely. It has. We're hoping that we get over 350 people to 400 wow. people this year, which would be great. 350 people. <laughs> and these cups were designed because our first year we didn't have wine, and oh, look now at this. we've incorporated some wine into it. That's, Shay, can you get a, a tight on that? Look how cool, cool that is. Look at that. <laughs> Shay and I have been shooting together for a long time. And these have become collectors. Cups. That's right. Have they? <laughs> That's you've right. Been here for five years. That's so right. if, I, if I bring five cups, do I get in free? Is that yes, how it works? That's right. That's that right. Is, is that that's right. Yeah. One of the coolest things about festivals like this is you get to find new things that you haven't seen before. And what a better place to come than right here to the Harvest Festival in New Canaan. They got a bonfire and delicious gluten-free beer. This stuff is great. I'm going to be honest with you. I've never had gluten-free beer that I liked. Well, that was our mission. We right. wanted to change that for people. It was one of the most disappointing things for me when I was diagnosed with celiac disease was that I could find no good gluten-free right, beer right. on the market. And I decided I would just make it for myself. This is our take on a Saison. Okay. Um, Tell about Saison. Talk about what that means. We consider it to be more of a farmhouse style ale, very um, seasonally inspired, which means fall inspired. Yeah, yeah. Um, we use a lot of spices in our beer to compensate for the lack of flavor that we don't get from malt, okay. traditional malt that is. You're going to find notes of pink peppercorn, cardamom, vanilla bean, things like that. What? Uh, yeah, we really like this beer. This is our flagship. So. This is this is like this is Church House main beer. This is our main beer. What did you do before you brewed beer? Before I brewed beer, I was a medievalist. Actually, I went to Duke University for medievalism. Wow. Yeah. What does that mean? Like you carried swords and wore plate mail armor? I mean, I wish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I read a lot, um, okay. and it gave me a lot of good reference for brewing. Actually, yeah, because yeah, that was sense. the biggest industry yeah, it makes of the friars. Sense. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a sip of this. Yeah. Right Cheers. Here. Cheers. How did you drink that? Wow. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I know. How about that? How do you like that? I don't know 100% if anybody could pick this out being gluten free. That was the idea. This is really good stuff. I'm, I'm blown away, Taylor. I really am. Uh, gluten-free beer, I was like, eh. Yeah. 
man. But you're doing a great job. You're killing it here. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers right here. So tell me about what do we have here? What kind? I mean, obviously the Nature Center has so many great things, but you guys have a lot of birds and stuff. Every animal we have here is an animal that would not have a home otherwise. So they were either injured out in the wild, and this is a permanent home for them, or they were someone's pets that people couldn't take care of anymore. How do you handle it? Because obviously, if, if you know you have a vulture, I'm just picking a random bird. I don't know why yeah. I pick a vulture. We do have a vulture. vulture. We have See? a turkey vulture. There yeah. you go. You have a vulture. Obviously, he doesn't want you to pick him up and carry him from place to place. Now, there's one step in between that and us, and it's called wildlife rehabilitation. Okay. We are not a rehabilitation center. We're the step after that. Okay. So there's people dedicated to taking herd animals, trying to fix them up and put them back outside. Yeah. yeah. If they can't, then we they call us. Okay. If they can't find a home, they're actually put down. So we're, you know, in, a, in that sense, we're saving them from that fate. Wow. Harvest Fest is one of our fundraisers we have throughout the year. Vet bills, food, people to take care of them. Supporting events like this takes care of animals that this gentleman helps. This is a great event, a great spot, you gotta check them out. The Connecticut beer community, I feel like over the past two years, it's just grown exponentially. Yes. Yes. Talk about that. I mean, it seems like these guys are all very, very supportive of each other. It's a great community. We are very supportive of one another. When I started three and a half years ago, there were six of us. There are 41 operating breweries now in the state of Connecticut, wow. and there's probably another 20 on the books. That's insane. It's terrific. It's insane, but we're all helping each other out. We borrow hops from each other. We uh, help each other out with recipe formulation. Uh, we're at, at events like this together, so it's just a terrific community. With all of us doing it now, we're getting more and more people into the craft yeah, yeah. beer market, so all the boats are rising on that's the tidal great. basin. That's so it's great. really been dynamite. This beer is fantastic. I'm not a stout guy, and that stout is unbelievable. I have a feeling the summer is going to be just as good. Let's give it a go. Oh, are you kidding me? Wow. Huh. Well, <laughs> I guess that's going to do it. I'm out of beer, and I think we're done with this festival. What an amazing time hanging out right now at the fifth annual Harvest Festival at the New Canaan Nature Center. Great beer, great people, great music, great food. I can't wait to come back next year. Join me next time as we take Edible Nutmeg on the road. I'll see you guys down the road. Supporting local farmers and artisans is one of the most important things we can do in any state. If we don't support these guys, we're going to lose them. And not to mention, they make great products. Join me next time as we take edible nutmeg on the road. I'll see you guys down the road.